My name's Mark Simpson. I've been doing CAD for donkey's years and look like it now. And um, so this is where we're going. My emphasis is undeniably industrial. I am not cool, but we've got some great pictures, so we'll just have to go with that. And I'll break the PowerPoint before the end, no question. Um, so it's got to be done in 18 minutes, which usually takes two hours. So here we go. Who are CAD shower? We do CAD stuff. We do AR stuff. We do VR stuff. Uh, based in Germany, we develop here, have done for 30 years, uh, and we've got people all over the shop. What do we do? So we have a whole product line of stuff called Medusa, which a few of you will have heard of, and most of you won't have. We don't do any interactive modelling like Creo or NX. We do big sheets, we do plant design, we do factory design, um, we do pipe ISOs and PNIDs and stuff. The biggest chunk of our work is all about developing solutions for people. Years ago, everyone had a big CAD CAM department, and they developed solutions. We take those on, we maintain them for people, and we write new ones. Ten years ago, everything was out of the box. Now, quite often, we get asked to develop a whole new layout solution for people um, because you can put it all together one piece at a time, but that's too many clicks and you can't do it fast enough. And because we've done um, rendering and stuff, since you had to make a screen, a single image, took an hour, then another one, then another one. And so um, naturally we did this for a while. And um, so we have a, a VR product and then we create virtual reality and augmented reality apps for people with specific behaviours in them because we've got a load of developers and you have to keep them busy and pay them and buying chocolate biscuits is the big thing. We also do IoT and iOS, Internet of Things everyone knows about, Internet of Space. That's mostly 5G. So most of our customers have big plants outside. Most of them, there's no wireless. Most of them have wired nets because they don't allow things like that on site. But more and more, uh, satellite comms means that people can have a handheld thing that says, OK, get in your pickup truck, drive half a mile over there, climb five steps of stairs, go and fix this pump on the top. So that kind of thing. And we do all the stuff that everybody has to do about integrating with every system that's got a database behind it and look after the files and pff, it's work, it pays the bills. And, but this is all about AR and VR. So a bit of an overview of the technologies. Looks like you've probably had all this, so I'll go really fast, but um, there's a guy called Paul Milgram who created the Milgram Reality Virtuality Continuum, which is a great thing to say. So we start from here on the left, actual reality. Not everyone's got any, but it's good to have. Um, augmented reality, that's adding virtual things into the real world. Augmented virtuality, AV, less common, though everyone uses it. So Google Street Map, uh, Google Earth, those are augmented virtuality things. Using a virtual world to show you photos of the real thing. It's all photos. Useful uh, and free. And then there's the immersive VR, which nearly everybody looks at on a screen, not with a headset. Go figure. So we'll talk a bit more about those. Smartphones and tablets, cheaper headsets, great for VR. Smartphones with a camera, that's good. Tablets and more expensive kit. We, we like this mixed reality part for Microsoft because they do all the bit about working out which headsets work. Beyond that, you have to have applications which work with a particular piece of hardware and then you're tied to that. So we kind of like this. This is 500 quid stuff. That's grand upward stuff. You can do the same thing at a smaller extent on a smartphone. In actual fact, my current smartphone has more, nearly the processing power of the HoloLens, but not the graphics card. And the cardboard box costs you about five bucks from Amazon, including shipping. The big value of them all would be the HoloLens. So you can augment that, so you can look through it, you can see the real world, you can put some CAD stuff in. Quite heavy, two and a half kilos, costs you three and a half grand. Really fast processor, they're great stuff. Um, assisted at the same idea down this end, that's some glasses to see the world and we can, we can put some pictures in on the right hand side, some images. Mixed up, much more usable for people who wear them all day. Someone doing a, a maintenance app. You heard people talk about AR kit and AR core and there's the PTC Vuforia. They're the, probably the four biggest kernels, software libraries to everybody else. Um, this was, Vuforia was the first and is really good, now owned by PTC. AR kit and AR core release cycle is weekly. It comes that fast. And, and in nine months, what we couldn't do appears. You post it on the forum, you say, do this, doesn't work, and it comes. It's really quick. 
Windows are a bit different. They're providing the mix, the portal, and you add an app to it. A few things you can do with it. When we build apps for people, these are the things you can do in them. Motion tracking, so you can find spaces. You can move the thing. You don't always need to look at the datum. Really good. Find the floor. Find the walls. No, you should walk through them. Shouldn't walk through them. Find an image. Show some information. Might be a QR code. Could be a picture of the thing. Can be the 3D object too. Um, interact with them. Do stuff. Fun. And they can be multi-user. And considering a lot of this was written for games in the first place, th there's a reason for that. We just have to hide the guns and things. So cloud makes sense. Everyone says all this stuff should work with the cloud. Actually, that's not really true because in lots of industrial environments, you're not allowed to access the internet. There is none. Go in an oil refinery, take your phone out, you, know, you get shot, they'll throw you out. So it also has to be able to work downloaded onto a device. So it's good. It's there, it's all fully buzzword compliant, but just think about it. So here's some examples, and this is a bit less boring now, so I'll try and go faster still. Virtual design reviews, everybody's showing you virtual design reviews in VR. It's good. We like collaborative meetings, same thing. You have to think about it, because if you've, unless you've got massive bandwidth, it's not so easy, and we have a solution to that in a bit. Um, virtual product experience, don't take all your stuff to a show. Take some apps that show it. Our customer, Mariani, they used to take 30 tons of equipment to every show they went to, and that's 50 shows a year, one every other week apart from Christmas and New Year. So that's two trucks trailing the world all the time. Um, and you can use your documentation that way. Production logistics, people with some kind of headset, some kind of tablet can look at this, pick the phone out and go, how do you put this together? Apps can do that for you. Um, find the plant, I demonstrated that, get to the place. And also, any device with a camera that is connected to a network, a support guy somewhere else in an office can see what you're seeing and you're going, is that left-hand thread, is that right-hand thread? Sorry, engineer, been doing it too long. Virtual training, health and safety is always good. The old companies did this for at least 20 years. They have one health and safety expert in each plant. They always have their own networks and they chatted in virtual rooms for a long time. They're good at it. Um, and remote group learning, teach the people before you put them in the plant. Virtual inductions are good. Save arms, same legs, same falling off things, it's great. Um, at the other end, these are all doing the same data from CAD, from design. It's just doing other things with it. Context sensitive instructions, plug this in here and then fill up the water. Visual breakdown and same remote expert support thing. So, my first AR example. Um, this is a pipe in our office. The pipe's from the design system. They're showing what it would look like or how bad it would look like. And that's my worst slide. So this is our VR environment. Um, we won't worry for a minute where the data comes from. So, uh, yeah, some art stuff on the front. Load or something. So our stuff works with FBXs, film boxes and objects. This is the factory. This is our bread and butter stuff. We build big layouts. When Ben was talking about, um, you know, he's got scenes and everyone wants to build their studio. We're always building another factory, another factory, another factory, another factory. There's one prototype, people put their machines in, but every installation's different. And that's, that's what it does. You can walk through it, you can pick things, you can measure. This is the immersive thing. The immersive thing's really weird to watch on a screen, not on a headset. You can see here actually the guys that are headset on slightly tilted, everything's leaning a little bit left. And it's a bit jerky. If you do it live, try it, it's fantastic. Watching it on a video, less good. And we can make things invisible and we can pop up panels of information and all that kind of stuff. We'll show you what's inside the machine, which looks startling like what's on the other side of the machine, but hey, I don't make the videos. So that's our, that's our bread and butter work. Build the plant, show it, walk through it. And you can fly through it and you can show exactly what happens when you run into the machine. Oh, there you go. And there's some more stuff inside it that we didn't kill off. And some more stuff and some more stuff. So then you can fly around. Nobody in our world spends 20 revisions designing the factory because design time is money. So they want, to they want to design it once, convince the customer that's what they were paying for, sell it and ship it. So VR has a special use, getting paid. This is a virtual trade show for Mariani. Great Italian customer, lots of style, so the stand's always wonderful. You can look at the catalogue, show me a 3D thing, picks up the image from the catalogue, you can turn the image around, we can show them animated. This is a Creo model, I think, um, of a thing that packages milk, shrink wraps them, it's running, but it was the, it was the fact you held the tablet over the picture. 
So the tablet's got an AR app on it. Um, this is a slightly similar idea, so um, we can show things full size, part size. Um, you can put a QR code on the floor, we'll show you a meter, 20 meters, maybe up to 30 meters square, that kind of size. And the QR code, the datum, can go outside the picture. Sim similar idea, this is scalable. We probably wouldn't make this scalable now. Great way to show your stuff. All our customers make machines in, not our software. They put them together, visualize them and sell them out in our software. We like that. Yeah, there's a pallet going. The pallet will go up and it'll put a box on. It'll take it down. It adds a lot of realism, a lot more than a paper catalog. And it's much easier to carry around. And of course, you can give the customer the URL to your, to your app. They can download it and they can do it at home. This is documentation. Uh, this is Klaus and Union. We do this for a lot of their stuff. So this is an app. This is a video of an app, so it's a bit shaky. And um, the behavior to take it apart is added in afterwards. The fact you can walk around it, turn over it, click on bits and see what happens is the interesting part. So that's, you can use that to sell with, you can use it to maintain it with. We add animations for people. In very way, this is showing that some of the fluids bled off to help with the cooling of the magnetic rotor. It's a bearingless pump, seal pump for pumping things that you don't want to know about. Here's an app by a guy who hadn't, a program who hadn't figured out that really you shouldn't let the base go around, that should be bolted to the table, but hey. Um, so this is a CAD model with some behavior. There's the same thing showing a, a V12 that we found off something like CG Trader. Okay, so that's loads of stuff that apps can do. This is a HoloLens. This is what this is good for. So this is a plant, and as Scotty walks across the car park, you see about 80% virtual about 20% real world. You can see the trees in bits and somebody else's car that was there that we couldn't find the keys for to shift off the car park to make the demo. So it's good. Bear in mind that you need a big empty space or you need a minder for the person behind them. If we, we did group up in a big empty warehouse, we put six HoloLens on six executives from a large soft drinks company, but we needed six minders to stop them bumping into each other and they're all going like this. It works great, but and it's, and it's two and a half kilos on your head. And, and, and it's three and a half grand a piece. So, you know, that's 35 grand worth of kit for one one hour demo. Made a point, but this, this, I, this bit I love. This is, I've got a machine. This is on the trade show stand. Could be in the real world. You have an app. Each QR code takes your hyperlinks to something else. The hyperlink says, in this case, is an animation. Uh, is an animation. This is the thing that presents the film to wrap up uh, drink cartons before you put them in the cardboard boxes. So it picked up that, lo downloaded that animation from a local network because there's too many to have on the tablet. Um, then this QR code shows you how it winds the film around the outside. So the QR code acts, acts as a datum, the graphics comes from the design software and we might lean on that a bit so you can do it fast. But pretty straightforward. And there's the thing that pushes the, pushes the packages through. So it could be a manual, great to explain on the stand how it works, how ours is better than somebody else's. And uh, I think that was about a 2,800 quid app with their data. Not particularly dear. All of these things, little icon at the bottom, we can hook them up to live data. So you could get machine performance if you want to, the internet of things and so on. Right, the bit that I spend my life doing. These are the practical things that everybody who shows you great VR doesn't necessarily say. So you need the 3D data, someone has to have modelled it. Um, and we continually review this kind of thing. If you're doing AR, it's great. You only need the things you want to show. If you're doing VR, you need the scenery as well, the environment in other people's word. But scenery does it. Get stuff from CAD. It's always too complicated from scanning. And here's a couple of examples. And I have 30 more slides of the ways we get older stuff. So I've just, just a few. So we only want the polygons, edges and colours from this stuff. So there's a typical 40 megabyte Creo model. Um, there's that after we've spent three minutes ripping the insides out of it. The insides have gone, we've closed some bigger holes, uh, we've killed a few bits off and we've changed the facet in a bit. There's the same thing three or four more minutes later, depends on your hardware. All the little holes are closed, some of the things are boxed, the little fasteners have gone, and um, there's a bug where it made that big tube in the middle, but hey, 
And here's the ultimate simplification. It takes no time at all. We can rip through that box everything and you can use it straight away. So context is important. So this is fantastic if I'm going to walk all over it. That would probably do. If I'm building a plant with 5,000 objects in it, 10,000, 50,000, there's going to be some of those near the edges. You know what it is, you can click on it, we can substitute a better picture. You need, you need both things. Uh, laser scanning, everyone will tell you about laser scanning, Faro here, they're really good at it, nice people. That's a piece of a brewery, I uh, shan't tell you which one. That's what a laser scan looks like in CAD. Um, you need to be quite good at it. You can do it, you can measure, it's great. You can get them in colour too, but it's still that kind of thing. That was about a day's work to scan this basement. People can turn it into that. That's about a week's work. So, so scanning stuff is no panacea for this. You can do it. Depth sensors on tablets make that far better now. And then there's the putting it together bit. And this is, this is our way. So to build one of those big factories, in fact, this factory, that's a layout from a customer, and they would expect it to be able to... Everything in pinkish, and this is a machine from a customer, um, that they would have in Creo. And all the things in between are things that they wouldn't really ever create an assembly for. They would be a, it's one of these, it's this long, it's got those legs on it, it's this far off the floor, it's got these things on it. Um, the drives on the left, the drives on the right. Configurable catalogue components. We build those. So in a layout like that, you'd expect to be able to create that much layout out in an hour. You'd expect to be able to take, see the 3D view straight away as many times as you like. Um, because we've simplified. The orange stuff is Creo models in this case the greeny stuff and the blue stuff's catalogue parts, our catalogue parts, that are parametric in a simple kind of way. And then here, if I, for whatever reason, I have to click this video, press the button or it stops. So this is my good friend, Sergio. I'm going to show it you live. Um, it's, it's the right kind of It's the right kind of stuff. This is a machining line with palletizers. They put things on pallets, the machine bits off the edges. In our case, these showing imported machines. We can build the walls and all that kind of stuff. We can import them from BIM. There's lots of solutions for that. Um, our trees are terrible. This is an engineer's fly-through. It goes like that, like that, like that, and just walks through it. Or we can dump the lot into VR, so it takes 272 seconds to stick that model into VR on my laptop. No, it doesn't. It takes 27.2 seconds to put that model from the 3D world onto this. End of. On the way through, we recognise all the plane surfaces. So all the floors, so you can step on the floors, you can't stand on the things that aren't in between. We can find the walls, we can choose whether you want to walk through them or not. And I have to tell you a bit about the future. So crystal ball, exactly the same slides as the previous lady. There's this thing called the Gartner Hype Cycle. It's quite good. They said there'd be about 10 million devices doing AR by 2018. Uh, we think it's far more than that now. And these things keep rolling. And virtuality and that virtual reality at that time has slid off the end of the scale. We don't really understand why. But they, it's clearly fast growing. AR in retail will be a monster. Previous lady mentioned IKEA Place. They've got 2,000 of their pieces of furniture online in AR in an app. And you can put them down there. We can do it for two grand, thereabouts. So multi user, this is quite interesting. So. You can download to VR. Loads of people can go through it on different sites all over the world. You don't get one common consensus view. You do if you get them together in a room. So this is our theory. We call it VPC. And this is in beta at the minute. Release it when soon. So we've got a whole design side there. Big model. People can walk through it. We know what we want to talk about. We take the graphics and the metadata, some of, out of that and compress it down. And then we create a virtual meeting. The virtual meeting would be um, via remote meeting or Skype. You can use both of those. And then all those people see the same scene as the moderator, but they can walk off. So all of that's downloaded at the ends onto their tablet, their phone, their immersive headset, wherever they are. And then this guy can walk them through them. Um, or, or you can bring them back to a place. And then people can say, ah, can I, what about the clearance between here and here? So the bulk of the data sits on the local device and there's a protocol that sends those back through a web meeting. So you don't need the enormous bandwidth to run live VR to 20 people. I better hope you're, you're really sitting on some fast network. Uni's probably got it. Um, my boss just won't pay for it. He's mean like that. So any questions?
as I think I'm probably about on time. Apologies for being industrial, not really exciting and body form. <coughs> and so, does anyone have any questions? Uh, died then. Okay. <laughs> if you want to talk to us, we're downstairs in this Inox end on stand. Mark, we've got a question. Oh, uh, what do you think the biggest problem in using AR in manufacturing will be? Getting the data from the CAD app into a sensible app that you don't want to change too much. At the moment, we're building fixed apps, but largely fixed apps, um, and we spend a lot of time decompressing the data in between. Um, and, then, and then we can put them in an app, it's great, we can build some behavior into it. So I think it doesn't take us very long, half a day or something like that. So I think we do two animations and a 3D model up to 200 megs in a day. Um, but being able to just upload from design to a completely automated solution where you can download it onto the tablet or the device to look at, yeah, we, we, we've tried, or we are trying, and we have a good, our own simplification thing is quite automated, um, but one that works perfectly every time, that someone doesn't look at. Yeah, simplification would be the biggest issue, and we, we think we're quite good at it. But we've got another question over here. Sure. Um, you might also want to talk to the Lightworks people about the simplification in their slipstream. Um, yeah, yeah, it's, it's, it as, everybody has to yeah. do it. Yeah, there's, uh, there's this much hardware available for a sensible price. We now do VR on a 1,500 quid thing. Uh, 25 years ago, I, I was privy to someone who spent one and a half million pounds on a wall and 24 Spark servers, uh, Unix days, to do rendering that's not as fast as I do on my phone. So this is just the price is coming down. But, but now you're throwing more and more at the hardware, which is why this, if the hardware gets faster and faster, simplification won't matter. But so far, I don't see that, that ending in 10 years, you know. I'm uh, just wondering if you have experience with digital twins. With? Digital twins. Digital twins. Well, our factory is a digital twin, something we built for a long time. Can you define digital twin then? Oh, that's a good question. <laughs> Electronic model of a real world thing. Um, and if people would let us, and we have one that does that, um, and our CAD model of a factory can be hooked up. So if you click on the CAD model thing, the p machinery, we, could hit, we can hook live with Internet of Things type technology, though different protocols actually, um, and show you information about that machine, show its error rate, show you how long it's there, what power consumption it is. Uh, in a food world, it's always about the next wash down. Um, you know, all these factories have to be washed every four hours. It, they're not, they're not clean and simple things. They have to be cleaned again and again and again. So, um, yeah, so Digital Twin is side by side. Most people won't pay for it so far. In Germany, where I spend at the moment quite a bit of time, then lots of companies really are trying to build a Digital Twin of their production facility. Um, lots of benefits, but also they have to get around to paying for it. Traditionally, they have two layout, three layout people. Um, we, we would have called a one-man and a dog operation in less politically correct times. Now it's a bigger thing. Health and safety is more important. Uh, sh shorter shutdowns, that helps. Um, for a long time, the car companies particularly were really good at subbing that out, so they'd paint a line on the floor and say, for two weeks of shutdown, that company controls this area. And they put Harris fence around it, and they'd have to come in through the roof and replace that piece of production line. Now that's not so easy, because if your worker hurts themselves, it's the company's responsible, not the subby. So I think people are building more sophisticated live models of their installations and things. I guess. Yeah. So any more? We're just going to set up for. Our, I think we've. Any more questions? No. Thank you very much for listening. <laughs> Thank you.